Have you watched the recently finished airing Chinese web drama 少年游之一寸相思 Love in Between? And do you know that the title song is made up with three different poems from North Song Dynasty coming from the same poet? Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where a junkie on good storytelling shares their thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. This is yet another poem explanation video from Avenue X. I have already made a review video about this drama. I'll leave the link up here. If you've watched this drama, you probably have heard the title song multiple times, because unlike many other dramas, this drama tend to jam the title song into the plot. At different places, not right from the beginning of each episode. So, if you're watching a couple of scenes and the song comes up, then at least you would have heard parts of it, if not the whole thing. The lyrics of this song is very poetic because it's not written by a contemporary person, but by a very famous North Song Dynasty poet. And it's a combination of three different poems. So in this video, I'm going to break down that title song. Let me first start with introducing this poet. This poet is called. Yan Jidao. He's a very famous North Song Ciren. Ci is the particular type of poetry that is very popular during the Song dynasties. If you've watched my Joy of Life poetry video, you probably are already very familiar with it, and you know the difference between Tang Dynasty poems Shi and Song Dynasty Ci, another type of poems. Yan Jidao is the seventh son of a very famous official. Yan Shu. You can refer that to the drama Qing Ping Yue, Serenade of Peaceful Joy, where Yan Shu is a character in that drama. Yan Jidao and his father Yan Shu are often called the Big Yan and the Small Yan because they both are very famous poets. Yan Jidao is famous for writing very melancholy, romantic, sad but beautiful poetry that often comes from a female's perspective, which is a particular. Style of song poetry that was really popular, and he is one of the best writing this particular genre of song ci. I want to also quickly mention that the title of this drama is based on the book called 一寸相思 The drama added 少年游 in front of 一寸相思 which literally means the journey of youth. 一寸 is one inch. 相思 Hmm. This is a very tricky word to translate into English. You would often find people translate it as yearning or lovesickness, which is okay, but it doesn't quite describe what is included in these two characters. Xiang in Chinese language is used to describe something that happens on both sides. So you need two objects, two subjects, two things interact. Si means thinking. So as you can see, xiang si means two people, two parties thinking about each other. That's the literal meaning. But xiang si has so much more meaning behind it. And I guess at the end of this video, once you've known the exact meaning of the three poems, you will have a really good idea about what xiang si means in Chinese literature. Also, in the drama, 一寸相思 is the name of the weapon that the female lead uses. Now, let's go and break down the title song, 相思 yearning or love sickness. This song is made up with. Three parts: the first verse sung by a female singer, the second verse by a male singer, the third part chorus is them singing together. And in terms of the poems, it is exactly like that: the first verse by the female is one poem, the second verse by the male is another poem, and when they sing together, it's the third poem. If you look at the structure, it's not difficult to realize, even if you don't speak Chinese, that they're following the exact same pattern. The female and the male singer singing the lyrics in the exact same number of characters in the exact same structure. It is because these two poems are under the same ci pai pattern, the Song Dynasty particular way of writing poetry. This ci pai is called ruan lang gui. So all the ruan lang gui ci pai poems follow the same pattern. Then the chorus part when they sing together is following a different ci pai pattern, which is called. Now let's start from the top. The first female singing verse. I am going to try to sing the lines, the poems out because traditionally they were written for music. But no guarantee that I'm not going to switch pitch during this video because I do not have perfect pitch. First line. 
天边青长路成双，云随燕子长。天边青长路成双，云随燕子长。First, the literal meaning of each character. 天 sky or heaven. 边 edge. 金 gold. 长 palm. 路 dew. 成 become. 霜 frost. 天边 is the horizon line when you are looking out. And as you read this poem, you understand why this is the case because the writer is kind of at a high point in the city, viewing something. 金长 golden palm. This is a symbolic word. It's used to represent the capital of Song Dynasty at the time. The reason being, during Han Dynasty, in the Han Palace, they have those statues made of a fairy or god that is holding a plate. Collecting dew waters from heaven, so the golden palm of the statue of a fairy is used to represent palaces or a country's reigning power. Then, through time, it started to be used to represent capital. That's the best explanation I can find. So this is saying, on the edge of horizon, this poet sees the grandeur of the capital city. Lu cheng shuang, dew turns into frost. So this is clearly stating the time that this poem takes place, which is autumn. 云随燕子长，云 cloud 随 follow 燕 geese 字 character, as in calligraphy and Chinese language, 长 long. So cloud follows the characters written by the geese in the sky and stretches out into a line. So it is painting a picture of a autumn scene at the capital. Of North Song Dynasty in China, we very often think of the patterns that's made by the geese flying to the south、uh, in fall as characters written by those birds because they often form a line or some shape like that that looks like a Chinese character of human. So, 燕子 becomes a very common word in Chinese literature to refer to the patterns made by the birds, also as an implication of the season. Then the second line. 绿杯红袖成重阳，人情似故乡。绿杯红袖成重阳，人情似故乡。绿 green 杯 cup 红 red 袖 sleeve 成 at the time of 重阳 is the name of the festival that happens on the ninth day of the ninth month. Here the poet uses green cup red sleeve doesn't mean. Cups are all green and sleeves are all red. It is using two colors and the two things to represent a celebration taking place at this festival of Chongyang. People come together to celebrate. They drink, they dance. So that's what it means. Chongyang Festival is a very important traditional Chinese festival where two things are very important. One is paying respect to elderly and also getting together with your family. People would usually celebrate it with climbing to a tall mountain in wherever they are and look far, and then come together with families. And if their family members are not with them, then they would write poems if they're poets to express their love and how much they miss their family. So Chongyang Jie is a traditionally quite important festival. 人情似故乡，人 human 情 emotion 似。Similar to like something, 故乡 hometown, the original place where you come from. Here you can understand this part as on this festival where you are supposed to be together with your family. People are taking this celebration and this kind of human interaction, human emotion, people's relationship remind you of your hometown. So that completes the first half of the poem. On the outskirts of the capital city of North Song Dynasty, and the poet is there. Uh, having a celebration, looking at the faraway landscape of the capital, and feeling he's reminded of his hometown. Then the second half of this poem. 蓝佩子举簪黄，阴晴里酒狂。蓝佩子举簪黄，阴晴里酒狂。蓝 orchid， 佩 wearing accessories， 紫 purple， 举 chrysanthemum flower， 簪 hairpin， 黄 yellow. So. This gives you another picture of what people are wearing on the day. It is a very common thing to wear things, flowers and 
other plants at particular time of the year celebrating particular kind of festival. So this is saying wearing a purple orchid and then pinning a yellow chrysanthemum flower in your hair. Yin qing li jiu kuang. Yin qing means eagerly doing something. Li here can be interpreted as reenact. Bring something to life again. Of what? Jiu kuang. Jiu. Old. Kuang. A kind of attitude that is carefree, that is untamed, unrestrained. So the poet is wearing all those seasonal flowers on him and eagerly wanting to revitalize his old ways of acting super carefree and untamed. <laughs> when I say that word, I, uh, I see uh, the drama in my head. Here is a little bit of history about this poet. He often refers to himself as a person who is kuang or shu kuang, literally meaning you do not care about traditions, you do not quite follow the rules, you are unruly, you are untamed, you are unrestrained, you are, you know, I do whatever I like. Then the last line. Yu desire, jiang will do something. Chen sunken, here it can mean deep. Zui drunk, huan exchange. Bei sadness, liang, literally meaning cool, but it could also mean a loneliness. So he wants to exchange the feeling of sadness and loneliness with a good drink to get drunk. 清歌莫断肠, 清, clear, 歌, song, 莫, do not, don't. 断肠, think back on my videos of Joy of Life Poetries. If you still remember, you may know this word. It shows up again, it shows up so many times in Chinese poetry. Literally meaning the heart-wrenching feelings inside. So here the poet is saying, do not sing me a very sad song. If you do that, I will feel very heartbroken. That completes the first poem, the first verse in this song. Now we go to the male part, which is exactly the same zipai pattern. So if you look at how many characters happen in each line, it's exactly the same. And if you read it out, it would also follow the same tonal pattern that is very important to song zi pattern, but I'm not gonna go into detail in that because it's really complicated. And because the phonetics of Chinese language has changed drastically since Song Dynasty to now, the current Mandarin sounds totally different from over a thousand years ago's language. Unless you can actually pronounce it exactly in the ancient way, the set pattern, even if we do know today, would not actually fit today's Mandarin 100%. So that's one little side note. For the male singer, he sings, 就像残粉四当初,人情恨不如。就像残粉四当初,人情恨不如。就, old, 香, fragrance, 残, leftover, 粉, powder, 四, as, similar to, 当初, previously, in the beginning, a time that is at the very beginning of something we're describing. So in this poem, it is kind of written from a female person's perspective, but because it doesn't really have a clear subject, you really can apply that to any people you can think of who is missing a partner, who is thinking about a romantic relationship that was in the past. From the olden days, the incense, the fragrance, the powders are still left over till today, which still looks like what they are. That's the first part of this line. 人情很不如, human emotion, regretfully, not as before. So regretfully, even though the things, the objects are still here, they're still as before, this is different. The feelings, the love that people used to have, the relationship they used to have, the emotions they used to have about each other are now not as before. So now you see, compared to the first part, which is literally a feeling a little bit sad on a festival day. This second half is really talking about the loss of a love that used to be very beautiful. Then the second line, 一春悠悠树行树, 秋来树更树, 一 means one, 春, spring, 悠悠, still have, 树, many, 行, row, 树, leather, it can literally mean the writing of each character or a letter that you send. 
So this part means in spring there was still a few letters that I receive from you or that we've sent between each other. But then 秋来书更书 ，Qiu autumn 来 comes 书 the letters 更 even more 书 sparse. So there are many shu pronunciation in this line, but there are different characters. Yet when autumn comes, the letters between us have become even fewer. This is continuing that feeling that you see in the first line, which is a love that used to be really beautiful, used to be very passionate, has cooled off, and the contact between the lovers has also cooled off. Then the third line, 清风冷，枕远故。愁肠待旧书。清 means quilt, a type of bedding. Feng phoenix, 冷 cold. Zhen pillow, 冤 Mandarin duck. Gu alone. I don't think I need to explain it very much. You would understand what this means because phoenix are in pairs, Mandarin ducks are in pairs too. And here you can literally read it as the embroidered pillows and quilt that has. The phoenix and the Mandarin duck on them, but now they're cold, so nobody is there to warm it, and they're alone because there isn't another one. But you can also interpret it as when you're sleeping. If you are two people together, then you have the other phoenix and the other、uh, Mandarin duck. But now this is a person alone, so that other half of the phoenix is cold, and、um, this person. Mandarin duck is alone, sleeping by itself. Yeah, this is very typical from this poet. He just really likes to write this type of very sad romantic poem. It does reads more female, more feminine than male. But then you know, guys can miss their partners too. 愁肠待酒书，愁 sad， 肠 intestine. 愁肠 means the sad feelings inside you. 待 wait， 酒 liquor. Shu express relief. So here it means all that sad feeling inside is waiting for the liquor's help to get expressed. Then the last line of this poem: 梦魂总有夜成序，那堪何梦无？梦魂总有夜成序，那堪何梦无？梦 dream 魂 spirit 总有 even half 也。Also, Cheng turns into something, becomes something. She illusional. Here, this part can be interpreted as even if this lonely lover can dream about the past, about the memory, it still turns into an illusion. So you can dream all you want about the past that you've had, but you know it's not real. It's an illusion. Then the last bit, 哪堪何梦无？哪堪 means. How can something stand something? He here means also even. It's like on the top of something. There's something more. This character usually doesn't mean that, but at this part of this poem, it means that. Meng dream wu not happy. So within this quite short line, it already expresses a quite complicated feeling from a lover who is no longer in the relationship with. The person they love. They're tortured by the memories and the dreams, but they know it is irrelevant to their reality. It is useless. But even that sometimes becomes too much to hope for because dreams just don't come to you on your command. So the male verse of this song is a, a very sad romantic poem. Now let's head into the last bit. Thank you for sticking through. I have to say, in the middle of this video, I know this video is. Getting really long. In the chorus part, it is a different si pai, zhe gu tian, and it's sung by the two voices, kind of intertwined together. Zui pai chun shan xi jiu xiang. Zui pai chun shan xi jiu xiang. Zui drunk pai pat. Chun spring shan shirt xi pity jiu old xiang fragrance. A couple of characters have already showed up in the previous two poems. This part is describing the poet is getting drunk, or the person that is the subject in this poem who never shows up, which is very common in Chinese poetry, is getting drunk and patting on their spring shirt that still has that lingering scent. 
from before. And this person is feeling a bit pity for the lingering scent. If I pat it too hard, would I destroy it? I still have a quite strong emotional attachment to my past. So you see, the third part is another sad love poetry. The next line, 天将离恨恼,疏狂 天, heaven, 将, let something happen, 离, separation, 恨, regret, or even hatred, depending on how this character is used. Now, make something angry. 疏狂, do you still remember earlier on, I said this poet likes to refer to himself as a person who is Shu and Kuang. So this line means heaven intentionally uses the pain, the sadness, the regretfulness of separation to anger a person like the poet himself who is Shu Kuang. Tian here can just mean fate or the things that happen in this world that people just do not have control over. And this poet thinks of himself as somebody who's carefree, who does not care about rules, who is very unrestrained. But yet, even though he's a person like that, he still gets the pain from separation and he feels it is fate torturing him intentionally. Then the next line. 年年陌生生秋草年年 year, year, here it means every year. 陌 means a kind of road that is desolate, that is not well paved, is far away. 上 on top of. 生 grow, 秋, autumn, 草, grass. So every year on that far away desolate road, the autumn grasses grow. 日日楼中到夕阳 The next line, 日日, day, day, so every day. So you can see 年年, 日日, they are matching each other. 楼, building, 中, inside, 到, arrives, 夕阳, setting sun. So the grass grows every year on the road, and the setting sun enters this building every day. The motion of time moving on day by day, year by year, and the nature moves on. It doesn't care about how much pain people suffer. It just continues. Then the second part of this poem. 云淼淼,水茫茫 云淼淼,水茫茫 Yun is cloud, shui is water. Miao miao and mang mang are two adjectives that are often used to describe cloud and water, especially the quality that they give. Miao miao is the type of existence that is ambiguous, that's rolling, that is edgeless and expansive. And mang mang is also something like that that you can't see quite clearly and it's kind of everywhere. So you can picture a rolling sea of cloud or a misty, large, open water that is very hard to grasp. It doesn't have a solid body, it just is everywhere. It is filling the space. 征人归路许多长 zheng means deploy a troop, ren human, xu duo, a lot of, chang, length, or long. So here it means the soldiers that have been deployed uh, to a very far place, their journey of coming back is very, very long. People who are very far away, who have left for a long time, for them to come back, the journey is very tough. And when you can expect them, is as ambiguous and as hard to grasp as the cloud seas and the misty water. Then we get to the final line of this poem, and also I think the most important line of this entire song. I do not need to explain that any further. That's in the title. 本是 essentially is intrinsically is wu not having ping proof yu language. This lovesickness, this yearning that you say or you write with words is something that's essentially impossible to prove. Then it's leading to the logic of the next line. Mo xiang hua jian fei lei hang. Mo xiang hua jian fei lei hang. Because xiang si ben shi wu ping yu. Mo do not, don't. Xiang towards. Hua jian, hua is flower. Jian is letter paper, very specific type of paper that you write on. 
Hua Jian here would mean a very beautified, a very decorated letter paper. Fei, waste, lei, tears, hang, rose. So here you can interpret it as don't waste your tears writing those letters expressing how much you miss somebody or how much you love somebody because xiangsi is something you cannot prove. It could also be interpreted as don't waste your tears reading the letters that's coming to you. So these two lines really do wrap up the super sadness, the heartbreakingness that you see in this song, but also in this poem itself because lovesickness is essentially words without proof. Don't waste your tears at the love letters. Whew. Yeah, I feel like Yan Jidao has so much trauma in his heart. He is known for writing a lot of such poems and these three are famous, but not like the most famous ones. He has even more famous poems that are just like so heartbreakingly beautiful, but very romantic and very feminine. Don't be so surprised because this type of super romantic, sad, almost girly love poetry was super dominant and popular during a particular time back in Song Dynasty. Many well-known historical figures have written poems within this genre. And at the end of this song, the female singer repeats the first line of the lyrics, 天边金长, 路程霜, and it ends. So I finished explaining the three poems included in the title song of 少年游之, 一寸相思, Love in Between. Do you feel information overload? <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing with Chinese period dramas is if they really want to pull all kinds of references in literature, in history, put them in the plot, put them in the lines of the character speaking, or put them in the title or the ending song, it really can go to the everlasting, never-ending explanation land of culture, of literature, of so many other things that's included in the combined package called Chinese culture. So that concludes this very long poetry explanation video. Thank you for sitting through it. If you are still here, you are a miracle. I hope you like this type of video. It does take quite a lot of effort to do than my normal drama review videos. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching. <laughs> Mo